This videotape is the first in a series of four videotapes from the Healing Tao Video Library, which are designed to instruct you in the complete practice of the microcosmic orbit meditation. The practices in these tapes are fully and completely detailed in Master Chia's book, Awaken Healing Light of the Tao, which is an essential companion to the videotape. Opening your microcosmic orbit and circulating your internal energy is not a goal to be accomplished, but a process to be engaged in. This series of tapes leads you through progressively deeper and more profound experiences of the energy flow inside your body. This first videotape will lead you through the basic meditation. Tape number two and tape number three will teach you the advanced practice of the meditation and tape number four will lead you through the half-hour advanced meditation. The first half of this videotape will introduce you to fundamental concepts about Qi and the human body. The second half will lead you through a very basic level of the microcosmic orbit meditation. In the first half of the tape, these three important concepts will be presented. 1. The identification and location of major energy centers along the path of the microcosmic orbit. 2. The nature and definition of our original force energy. And 3. The nature and definition of our sexual energy. In the second half of the tape, with an understanding of these three concepts, you will be led through the meditation. First, you will be introduced to some basic warm-up exercises. Second, you will be led through a meditation called Warming the Stove, which activates and focuses the original force and sexual energies. And third, you will be led through a basic version of the microcosmic orbit. What is the most ideal state of health that a person can ever experience? In the West, we tend to believe that a person reaches their peak of health in their 20s, and we think of strong athletes as models of physical attainment. We view external strength and endurance as guidelines by which we can assess someone's overall health. But is this really true? How do we measure health? Since ancient times, the Chinese have said childhood is the most ideal physical state any of us ever experience especially early childhood. As infants and young children, all of us go through a nearly perfect qi state in our body. Qi is the invisible force that makes our physical, visible body alive. It has been compared to the steam that powers a train, or the electricity that makes a light go on. The term qi is what the Chinese use to describe the energy that powers all of our physiological and metabolic processes. Depending on our age and health, we will have a smaller or greater amount of this qi in our body, and the qi will be freely moving or it will be stuck. Perhaps the easiest way for us to translate qi into our own thought and language is as life force energy, or simply energy. In this sense, qi is the force that animates physical substance. As an infant and a young child, we all experience an abundance of qi, and this qi is able to circulate through our bodies unimpeded. The result of having this abundant and circulating qi is that our body is completely flexible, our internal organs are vibrant and free of toxicity. Our physiological systems work at an accelerated level, producing the tremendous growth rate of our early years. We absorb new information very quickly, and we seem to have inexhaustible energy, waking up every morning with joy and anticipation for the new day. Why aren't we like young children anymore? As we age, we lose that abundant and circulating chi, and as a result, we gradually lose our vitality flexibility, and joy of living. Several factors contribute to this gradual closing down. First of all, as adults, we may have used up a lot of our inherited qi. Secondly, we do not know how to conserve our qi, and we allow it to leak out of our bodies unknowingly. The Taoists say there are nine openings in the body through which our internal qi can leak out and be lost to us. The eyes, the ears, the nose, the mouth, 
the sexual organs, and the anus. And thirdly, we accumulate so much tension in our muscles and tendons and joints that it is impossible for the chi to circulate freely through our bodies. Even a very strong and physically active adult can be emotionally blocked and physically tense, and even the best athlete may unknowingly let energy leak out of the sense organs or sexual organs. In contrast, a newborn child will effortlessly conserve its own internal energy and allow it to circulate without any physical or emotional blockage. Can we become like a child again? Since ancient times, the microcosmic orbit circulation has been the proven method to re-establish abundant and circulating chi. The microcosmic orbit is the most important flow of life force energy in our body. The orbit combines the flow of the governor channel, running from the perineum up the spine, over the head and down to the palate, with the flow of the functional channel, running from the perineum up the front of the body to the tip of the tongue. Once these two channels are connected, they become a single, circular pathway running up the back of the body and down the front. The importance of connecting up this single circular pathway is that it functions as a reservoir for storing chi in the body. Every time the energy circulates through the microcosmic orbit, it adds more chi to this reservoir. As this reservoir becomes more and more full, it begins to supply energy out to all of the 12 organ meridians, which nourish all the organs and glands of the body. The microcosmic orbit meditation focuses on conserving and recycling our internal energy. When we stop the energy leaks in our body, then we begin to conserve and build our chi. And when we open the microcosmic orbit energy pathway, we begin to fully circulate our chi. With abundant and circulating chi, we can truly become like a child again. Thousands of years ago, Taoist masters discovered the body's chi centers through internal observation. By quieting the mental and physical processes and using their inner senses, the masters discovered that some parts of the body have more chi than others. These points serve as focal centers through which external forces are drawn in, absorbed, and transformed into life force. They serve as gathering points of nourishment for particular organs and glands. Each point produces its own quality of chi. This section explains the location of the energy centers and the quality of their energy in the microcosmic orbit meditation. The navel is the starting point of the meditation. A fetus draws its source of life and eliminates waste through the umbilical cord, which attaches to the body at the navel. Unlike other areas in the body, one can store energy here without any ill effects. When the navel is open, one feels balanced. When blocked, it manifests in sloppy, picky, or distracting behavior. For women, the ovary palace is located midway between the ovaries, a palm's width about three inches below the navel. Energy from the ovaries accumulates in the ovarian palace. For men, the sperm palace includes the prostate gland and seminal vesicles and is located at the base of the penis beneath the pubic bone. This center takes its energy from the sperm, made and stored in the testicles, the prostate gland, and the seminal vesicles. When the sperm or ovary palace is open, one has a sense of creative and personal power. When blocked, it is hard to enjoy life. The sexual organs are the front door, the anus the back door, and the perineum is located between the two. The perineum houses an energy pump that pushes earth, sexual, and life force energies up the spine, enhancing the flow of chi in the microcosmic orbit. 
This point connects with the sole of the foot to connect with the earth energy. When the perineum is open, one feels grounded. When blocked, one feels insecurity. The sacral hiatus is located about one inch up from the tip of the coccyx. The sacral, or lower pump, whose purpose is to pump spinal fluid up the spine, is found here. Spinal fluid supplies nutrients to the brain and spinal cord. Using your mind to increase the activity of this pump enables the brain to stay young. When the sacral point is open, one feels balanced. When blocked, one feels the past is a prison. The kidney point is located midway below and between the kidneys, between lumbar 2 and 3. Place a finger on the spine opposite your navel and bend forward, then backwards. The vertebra that protrudes and recedes the most is the door of life. The kidney center is called the door of life because it is the center of the prenatal chi, our inborn vitality. When the kidney point is open, one feels gentleness. When blocked, one feels fear of being taken advantage of. This point is located opposite the solar plexus at thoracic 11, T11. Place a finger on the spine opposite the solar plexus. T11 protrudes more than the others when you bend well forward. The adrenal center helps pump life force and sexual energy up the spine to the higher centers where they are refined. When the adrenal point is open, one feels a sensation of freedom. When blocked, there is a feeling of burden. This point, also known as the wing point, is located between the shoulder blades and between the fifth and sixth thoracic vertebrae opposite the heart center. When open, the point opposite the heart gives a feeling of freedom, a deep felt sense of life. Virtue comes forth. When blocked, there is a sense of burden, hopelessness, melancholy, and chaos. If you lean your head forward, you will feel a big vertebra protruding outward at the base of your neck. Just below this bone is the C7 point. This point is a central connection for the tendons. Any blockage at this point restricts the energy flow to the higher centers and redirects it to the hands and legs. When open, the C7 point enables one to embrace another with his or her own humanity. One feels connected. When blocked, there is a denial, a feeling of not fitting, stubbornness, and being burdened by inappropriateness. This point is located at the opening of the base of the skull above the first cervical vertebra. It is part of the cranial pump that draws spinal fluid and chi upward. The small brain point controls breathing, and when it opens, breathing pattern may change. When the small brain point is open, one feels inspiration. When blocked, one feels life is suffocating. Three inches within the skull at that point is the pineal gland point. The pineal gland has been called the time clock of the body, and when stimulated during meditation, it produces visions, the ability to see auras, and works like a compass point to give direction. When the pineal gland point is open, one may feel guidance by higher forces and radiate happiness. When blocked, one will have delusions, illusions, headaches, and erratic mood swings, and may feel a victim and a slave. The pituitary gland is located about three inches inside the skull from the mid-eyebrow point. The pituitary gland is part of the crystal palace in the center of the brain. This energy center is said to be the place to raise the spirit. When the pituitary point is open, one feels wisdom. When blocked, there is a sense of indecisiveness. This point is located below the thyroid and parathyroid glands.
It is the communication and dream center. Traditionally, this is a weak point that is hard to protect. It can release great energy and should not be opened too soon. When the throat point is open, one is more eloquent. When blocked, one feels an unwillingness to change. This point is located midway between the nipples and men. In women, it is one inch up from the bottom of the sternum. It controls the thymus gland, which is the center for rejuvenation. Taoists say that the heart stores our spiritual essence in its unawakened state. When the heart point is open, love, joy, happiness, honesty, and respect are all felt. When blocked, one feels under attack and sorry for oneself. The solar plexus point is located halfway between the navel and the bottom tip of the sternum. This is the spleen center and includes the pancreas, spleen, and stomach. This center controls auras, the vital energy of the body, and the middle cauldron. It is here that the body, soul, and spirit are combined. When the solar plexus point is open, one feels he or she can take risks. When blocked, there is a sense of panic and worry. There is no need to learn all the centers at one time. You can work on each center individually until you can circulate qi through all of them. After you have become acquainted with the locations of these centers, you can learn to experience their energy by focusing on them one at a time in meditation.